Hi everyone. In today's hobby video, I'm going to show you how to batch paint 10 guardsmen, making them look good, but also painting them quite quickly. The intent of this video isn't necessarily a painting guide, but how to paint your miniatures a bit quicker and bosh out 10 guardsmen all at once. Right, so I've glued together all the figurines without their heads and their left arms, obviously. Thought process is to make it easier to reach the hard to access parts like uh, the inside of their uh, las gun and also on the uh, inside of their bodies. Obviously the left and right arms are married up within the sprue so don't mix them up and to make sure I don't do that I've just uh, marked each with some very simple um, shapes to remind me which goes with which. Because uh, as you know if you mix up the left and right arms it doesn't actually fit, uh, they're preset by the different poses. Now I've done all the chaps basically without their headset with the Voxcaster because I feel I can access the head quite easily but the idea here again using a wine cork uh, with a drill bit to stick the wire into the bottom of the heads is to easier access their faces and the left and right of their neck so to say and also parts of their arm uniform as well um, and for some of them uh, like the Grenadier and Plasma Gunners you don't actually need to mark the uh, arms because it's quite obvious uh, which goes with which. And to paint the left arms, I'll be doing the same process but drilling a hole in basically uh, their sleeve like this one here. So the first bit of paint I put down is with Abaddon Black. Here I've put the black on any uh, parts which finish in black like the boots, weapon and their armour. And I've given an undercoat of black uh, to any parts like their, um, their flesh and also their equipment pouches which will form the undercoat. For those which finish in black like the boots, I've made sure the black is nice and thick. And on those areas which is only an undercoat, I haven't been as uh, worried as much if it isn't a clean, thick coat. You can see I've left the, um, the uniform uh, untouched, which will apply the McCrag glue to now. So basically what I'm doing is being very precise on how I apply the undercoat of the black and the McCrag glue in a moment. So I've applied the McCrag glue uh, using a more of a detailed brush this time as opposed to before with just a big old fat brush. Um, and you can see how much easier it would be to access um, the inside of their uniform which is obviously covered by their left hand so having it not on makes it much easier to access the complete part of all their uniform in particular around their belly and also the front near their groin. My colour scheme also sees them with their left shoulder pad being in red so obviously having that arm off their body makes it much much easier to paint the left shoulder pad in Mephiston red. Right when painting their equipment pouches and belt it's obviously way way easier to do the belt uh, with Rhino hide with the left arm not on. Um, so you can see I've masked paint all of them at the same time, so I've done every single one of their belts and every single one of their um, equipment pouches. At this point I also apply um, the Dunbar Brown uh, to their chin straps, which I've chosen to do, and that's obviously made it much, much easier because the head's off the body. Now planting their flesh and doing the left hand, which is uh, gripping the weapon, is made so much easier obviously again because the left arm isn't attached. Um, even for, say, this plasma gunner here, I've been very precise in picking out the detail of his, uh, his hand, his right hand, which is facing towards his belly. And obviously, doing the heads is again much easier because they are off uh, the torso of the figurine, making it much easier. And any arms like uh, these ones here, which grip weapons or are parts of the uh, grenade and plasma gun, I think, obviously made it again easier because they are off the model. Right, so on to painting all the silver, and it's important for me to state at this point that don't forget to be using the right paintbrush size for the right job. So what I basically use is the biggest paintbrush I've got, which I can, doing all the uh, barrels and the bayonets and the magazines. And then flipping onto aerial mode, you can see the setup I've got here. So I'm actually dusting this miniature with um, a fine paintbrush to get rid of any fluff or dust. I've actually got a video where I call out five key tips about becoming a better miniature painter, which include dusting your miniatures with a fine paintbrush, uh, making your own wet palette like I've got there, and actually how to prep and keep your brushes going for longer. So check out these tips in this video here. And to finish off the silver, I'm then using my finest paintbrush to pick out the final detail. So as I said before, make sure you use the biggest paintbrush that you can to pick out all the major silver detail like the drum magazine for the grenadiers and the big barrels, and then finish off all the silver with your smallest brush. Right, with all the layers done, it's now time to part assemble the miniature and putting on their arms. So you can see I'm just using my pair of pliers to remove the, um, the piece of wire, and if they are stuck in place, just simply snap it off at the bottom and you can glue it back in place. Now when you do glue them, make sure the parts you are gluing have no paint in place. So just like this torso, removing the paint from the, um, the arm socket, so to say. 
And likewise on these arms that come up, I'm removing all of the paint uh, to make sure you get a nice clean seal. Uh, so be very precise when you apply the paint. Um, and if you do find you have any sort of um, paint um, or correction glue flow over, you can of course paint it over the top later as a touch up. Now with it assembled, I'm applying uh, all the washes. So here it's using, um, of course, uh, Noon Oil on all the silvers. Agrax Earthshade on all of the pouches and their belts. And then of course, Reichland Flesh Shade on all of their fleshy areas. But right on to highlighting. Uh, just like before, make sure you do all of the same colors at the same time. So do all the uniforms using a latex blue to pick on the creases and folds. Don't go too overboard here, just make sure to do all the highest raised areas. Then using Mephestone Red, it's on the outside of the, uh, the red shoulder pads. Then using Mornfang Brown on the equipment pouches. And again, just do the, um, the corners and edges, and maybe even the Aquila. Don't bother with things like the buttons because they are quite small detail. And then using Dark Reaper and all the blacks. Now here, because it's quite a contrast, don't go, don't go too overboard yet again. Just do all the corners and edges and don't bother with things like the boots. Now highlighting all the silvers, I'm just using the same paints again, so in my case Gunmetal Grey or Lead Belcher from Citadel, to highlight all the silvers. Because you've used Noon Ore, it does make them quite dark. Uh, don't go too overboard yet again, just pick on the raised areas like the, um, I think it's a front hand grip of his uh, Plasma Gunner. And then finally the flesh, so both on their faces, which is made much easier because they're off the model, and also their hands. A quick tip is to make sure you don't put on straight Cadian Flesh Tones. Make sure you mix your Bugsman's Glow with Cadian Flesh Tones, because the Flesh Tones of Cadian can be probably too bright if put straight onto the Bugsman's Glow. And with the flesh all highlighted, you can then move on to sticking the heads on the torso. It's just like with the arms, make sure that any of the joining areas have no paint on them. So there you are, 10 guards been finished in about seven days or seven evenings of painting about three or four hours a night. You can see here there's no bases done or transfers, but if you want to get your models up to a parade ready standard, you can definitely do it in about seven days of painting. Other ways to speed up the process would be, don't even bother with the equipment pouches for any of the standard guardsmen with las guns. Some other ways are obviously this paint scheme sees me painting a red shoulder pad, just make them two black shoulder pads. I actually also paint their eyes as well, which frankly is almost impossible given how tiny the little eyes are. So if you're going for speed painting and batch painting, don't even bother with the faces, just rely on the uh, Reichlin flesh shade. Something else you could do is make sure you paint only the same style of miniature. As you can see, I've got a collection of Aloxcaster, Special Weapons, Droopers and Laz Gunners. If you just want to get it done as quick as possible, just do strictly las guns or strictly vox casters or strictly special weapons, because remember, variety is a spice of life, but actually slows you down when you're painting. I think to stay motivated, invest in things like audiobooks, or even just watch battle reports, because to be honest, painting 10 of the same model can be very, very boring. But anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video and it gives you uh, inspiration and some tips to do some batch painting and make sure you can bosh out a heap of uh, Ashton Miller Time Troopers. So if you enjoyed this, you can support me with a like, comment, or by subscribing. Or if you really want to support me, you can do so on Patreon. At the end of all my videos, I do a Patreon uh, platoon roll call in thanks to all those who support me via Patreon. Thanks for watching. Patreon Platoon, sound off. Color Sergeant DuPont, Sergeant Adal, Sergeant Gilliam, Sergeant Merrill, Sergeant Sims, Veteran Brady, Veteran Gibson, Veteran Hall, Veteran Lundeen, Veteran Mitchell, Veteran Witten, Guardsman Tom. <laughs>